Portia um, left, KM ended up having COVID. That day she tested positive. She woke up with a cough and she tested positive for COVID. Um, I've been feeling sick days after she got better. I keep testing negative for COVID, but I am like so under the weather. My throat is killing me. Um, <laughs> I keep having to like, what is that? Phlegm? Is that the stuff that come out your throat? It's just been all bad for me. But, oh, I left it out. Come on, y'all. I know. 
know, and they just heat on the pad too. Sorry about that. I forgot I had let the dog. I forgot I had the dog sitting outside. But anyway, so I haven't been feeling good, and nobody in my house ever had COVID when COVID was on a rampage. Everybody in, in my family has had COVID, and then ran through their household. But we haven't had COVID over here in this house. So for her to have caught COVID was crazy. Um, but she's feeling better. She was out of school for, it was a holiday. So she was out of school, of course, that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and at Thursday. And she went back to school on Friday. So today is just her second day back at school since she had COVID. <sighs> but I am just trying to make myself feel better. I have a few errands to run that I did not run over the weekend that I'm going to try to get done now. Um... Bath & Body had, uh, had a candle sale. I missed it. I wasn't able to make it because I wasn't feeling good. But I did do a pickup order. So I'm about to go there to pick up my order. And then uh, I'm trying to do some fall decor shopping. Y'all know I love decorating for fall. So that's what I'm trying to get into. But other than that, yeah, I ain't got nothing going on. Your girl is not feeling amazing at all. Like, at all, at all. So, but let me show y'all what we looking like while we about to go outside. Yeah, so, I'm not really wearing too much of nothing. I just got on um, a tank, some leggings, this little denim jacket with my New Balance. Y'all have seen these New Balance a million trillion and 14,000 times. y'all see me this is the look this is what it's given <laughs> was it moving no but seriously this is pretty much it y'all got on my little hermes necklace some little heart earrings my fendi bag yeah yeah the fendi bag goes everywhere this is literally like my every day every freaking day bag so I always got this. Leggings are from Forever 21. This top is from Fashion Nova. This jacket is from Fashion Nova. The shoes are New Balance. Nothing too special. Of course, y'all know I got my handy dandy Fendi bag. This is my everyday bag. My bag I carry everywhere I go. Excuse the sun because the sun is definitely sunning. Forever 21 leggings. New, but is these leggings see through? Wait, I feel like I see skin. Are they see through? Oh, I think they see through. Whatever. Are they see through? My mirror dirty. Are they see through? I can't tell. Oh, well, if they see through, then use your imagination if you can see through them. But anyway, so yeah, this is what my look is on a day when I don't feel like going outside, but I need to go pick up my candles. But anyway, this is what I look like. Yeah. Yeah, I just got to... um the little store where the Bath and Body Works at. I'm just looking for some lip gloss before I go in here because I don't want to go in here with my lips all crusty. This this is probably my first time putting on chapstick in probably about a week. And I still don't have COVID, so I still go down in history saying, I've never had COVID. I've never had COVID, but I still can't say Nobody in my household has had COVID because KM has then caught the government virus. But yeah. Yeah, I really have been like trying to figure out what it is. Hold on, let me just add something to y'all. Being sick these last couple of days, y'all, 
I look like I done lost about 15 pounds. A good maybe 10. I don't want to weigh myself because I don't like playing with the scale like that because the scale, the scale is just, the scale can kind of mislead you. So I don't really be messing with the scale like that. The reason why I say the scale can mislead you is because if you're like me and you're a person that's like weight training and you're lifting weights and you can like trying to take on a high protein diet and stuff like that muscle weigh more than fat so if you're losing fat and building muscle the the number on the scale is not going to change so i don't really fool around with the scale like that i mostly just go about what it look like and what my measurements are yeah my measurements this has been my goal but i'm just put it out there my measurements in my waist is a size 27 today when i woke up this morning because you measure yourself in the morning my waist is a 27 my hips are 42 and those are goals those are those are goals before i got sick my waist was like a 29 <laughs> ass and hips was still a 42 but my waist was like that that thing was growing so and the goal is to be a 26 inch waist anyway I was a 26 inch of waist two years ago, so I know I can do it. I just gotta, I just gotta get, get back to it. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I'm actually thinking about like sucking some fat out and just like getting some back lipo or something. Cause I don't know. The sun just decided to sun, so I had to like close the thing. But I'm about to go up in the store and get my candles that I ordered. I don't really have a huge presentation for y'all because. I already ordered the candles, so I'll just show y'all what I got once I get back in the car. <sighs> so, yeah. So, I really tried to get to Bath & Body Works yesterday to buy my candles because I really like to smell the new smells and the fragrances and everything. But I had to listen to my body. My body was like, girl, lay your ass down. Don't even bother to get up and just order these candles online. Just order the ones that you're familiar with and then that's just gonna be what that is so that's what i did but y'all let me go get my candles um i'm not bringing y'all with me so i'll be back So I had to get us up out the sun in order to do this little bath and body works haul with y'all. So first, I am going to start off with the candles that everybody should know. If you a bath, if you a true bath and body girl and a candle girl, then you should already know about the mahogany teak wood. Whether you get the regular or the intense, I don't get the intense anymore. I like the intense, but it'd be a little too intense. So uh, it's a Y'all yeah, know mahogany, mahogany teak will smell like a grown ass man. If you know, you know. I actually bought this candle for a co-worker of mine. <laughs> yeah, when they say I, when people say I don't have a filter, oh my God, I be feeling so bad. I bought this candle for a co-worker of mine and she was an older lady. And I was like, I had just met this lady. We had like a grab bag. I probably had been working at the job for like three months. I was like, oh, this candle reminded me of you to make your house smell like a man since you don't have a man. I didn't know if this lady had a man or not. Maybe she was giving lonely vibes. So I just, I don't know why I said that to her. But everybody was like, oh, Mercedes, why would you say that? I didn't know. I didn't know. 
I, I really have to do better with like watching how I say stuff to people because I, I'm so sweet. I'm so nice. I'm so chill. I'm no, so nonchalant. And sometimes stuff just like slide through and I don't be understanding that it's something that I probably should not have said until it's it's been said basically but anyway lakeside morning this is another this is a staple fall scent it just smell like i don't know it just smell like a good sunday morning chill laid up with your boo under the cover watching a movie sun sun drenching linen i get this all the time it just smell like fabric softener and clean clothes the black cherry merlot i always used to like this smell but now it's a little too cherry -y for me so i actually got this for kai milan i like it though like she can leave her when she light it she can leave her door open and i'm okay smelling it but i don't want my whole house smelling like like that and last candle that i got is also for kai milan y'all know it is pumpkin season and the girl is obsessed with everything that's pumpkin so I got her. This is a blind bag. I don't know what this smell like, but it's a pumpkin pecan waffles. Mm -mm. So my camera here cut off, but the pumpkin, what is it? Pumpkin pe pecan pumpkin waffles. It's a no. It's a no. I don't like pumpkin smells. Period. I don't like anything pumpkin. I don't want a pumpkin frappuccino, a pumpkin chai tea latte. I don't drink or like anything pumpkin, but it's trending. I get it. It's fall, and that's just what KM likes. KM likes everything freaking pumpkin. She just she just likes pumpkin. I don't know why, but she do. But yeah, y'all. So that was it. Um, yeah. So that's all I got from Bath and Body Works, y'all. Like I told y'all earlier, I do not feel good, so I'm actually about to go back in the house and lay myself in the bed. I'm going to take off all these clothes and lay back in the bed because I just do not feel good at all. At all. It's 118, so I have probably like two hours before it's time for me to maybe three hours before it's time for me to go pick up km so yeah so uh let me call y'all let me let me hit y'all back because i'm gonna pick y'all back up that's what we gonna do hey y'all what is good <sighs> i'm on my way to get km it is 3 46 p.m um about to go pick her up from school so i can listen to her whole day but uh just did a little running around earlier today but i just wanted to pick up the camera to give y'all some conversation um i've been kind of like just feeling away just with kai milan and you know school and the area that she go to school in is something totally different from what I experienced as like, you know, being her age because I don't know, it just seemed like everything is so crazy and you just got to watch everybody and you can't trust nobody. Not saying that you could when I was growing up or whatever, when we were growing up, but it just seemed like everything just seems so much more complicated for kids now. So I just, um, what just happened is the school shooting in Appalachia, Georgia, or whatever? Yeah. Now, demographically, these school shootings always happen with um, white kids. That's just what I'm doing is like I'm white. These shootings demographically always happen with white kids or whites, predominantly white schools, right? Um, the boy who shot up the school was a white kid. His parents had clearly had seen warning signs in regards to, you know, him having some issues mentally, um, as far as being bullied and things like that. Because I work in the mental health industry and I am a behavior health case manager for kids.
yeah so often um my camera had cut off but so often i always see kids who are either cutting or having uh, suicidal thoughts or you know just making threats to harm themselves and nine times out of ten the main cause and reason that they are feeling like this either because of course there are some issues that's going on at home or they being bullied or sometimes both um but the kids that be getting bullied they really be going through it mentally emotionally psychologically they really really do be going through it we have to pay attention we have to do better as parents and when we feel like our kids is being bullied or our kids have identified that they're being bullied or even if you just feel like something is going on we have to be very vigilant and very observant with paying attention to the warning signs and the telltale signs when it comes to our kids it's so many times where i talk to parents as a um, behavior health case manager and social worker i talk to the parents and when they tell me that their kids are being bullied the first thing i tell them is have you gone to the school have you reached out you know tried to set up a meeting with the kids parents that's bullying the kid um have you looked you know do you talk to your child have you looked into like some groups that they can get in or some programs that they can be involved with like whether it's like peer groups or self-esteem groups or motivational groups or Back in the day, they used to call it Big Brother, Little Sister. I don't know if those programs still exist, but we have to be responsible for our kids when they come into us telling us that these are the issues, these are the problems, even as educators, even as teachers and school staff and case managers at the school and nurses and stuff like that. Like, you have to make sure that you guys are paying attention and not just brushing this child off as just another student or brushing your child off as if oh they'll be fine it's just what kids do because it's not these kids really be going through it and unfortunately it leads to situations where they can't regulate their thoughts they feel like they have nothing to lose and it turned into a situation of a school pow pow and innocent people and innocent kids and innocent teachers and students and people are being harmed because this child did not get the help that they needed with the thoughts that they were having or, you know, like regulating feelings and emotions and having coping skills to think, to deal with, you know, their feelings and emotions when they are feeling overwhelmed. So we just really have to like pay attention to those type of telltale signs. My heart goes out to the families that's been impacted. Um, my heart goes out to um, anybody who has dealt with, you know, any type of gun violence or at a school or any type of situation. Because a lot of the times these people do be crying out for help. It's just that nobody pays attention or they miss the telltale signs of exactly what's going on. But I don't know. I know when I... Because I went to school in the ghetto. We had so many different programs in place. I remember us doing like the D.A.R.E. program. I'm sure y'all familiar with their uh, drug abuse resistant education. We did the D.A.R.E. program. We used to have assemblies where we used to have to talk about self-esteem. We used to have teachers and staff and parents that used to like really talk to us about you know how to act and being a good person like i i was a bully right yes yes i was a bully not that i'm smiling because that but it's like why was i a bully like i had no reason to be bullying people i really didn't like at the time i thought like my life was like I didn't bully people because I was having issues at home. I bullied people because I bullied people because I just thought I was tough. That's that's the whole moral of the story. I just thought I was tough. I just thought I couldn't couldn't nobody say shit to me, couldn't nobody beat me, couldn't nobody whatever. But I was a bully. And I used to feel bad when I used to hurt people's feelings and stuff like that. People still say I'm kind of got bully-ish tendencies, but I promise y'all, I if I could go back 
like those kids or people that I used to kind of bully and just pick on and try to fight all the time, I really would apologize to a lot of people. Some grown people too. I didn't. I still be bullied. Yeah. So I say that to say we had a lot of programs in place and a lot of people and a lot of parents that used to like kind of like work with us like when i used to bully people their parents used to be like what is wrong with you you are too cute to be acting like like y'all need to make up y'all need to just be friends and they used to like reevaluate the situation and some of these people i ended up actually being friends with but i don't know i just feel like it should be more things out there as parents we just gotta get more involved in our kids lives and just do more because we can do more and i feel like at the end of the day it be us the parents that be dropping the ball and that be feeling nine times out of ten it be the parents that be feeling our kids when these school shootings happen when um we just ignore the signs like our kids be crying out for help and we as parents sometimes blow it off i remember like just being just being black right growing up in a black household how many times have you you know heard a kid or somebody be like oh i don't feel good i'm depressed and your parents be like you could depress your ass on outside or you be like, oh, I just want to kill myself or whatever. I don't know if anybody else dealt with that, but I'm depressed. And they be like, what the hell you got to be depressed about? You got this. You got shoes. You got clothes. You got a roof over your head. It's more to it than that. Like, sometimes people just, everybody's brain is set up differently. Like, something that might not be a big deal to you as a parent, as an adult, can be like a whirlwind for a child. So we just really have to like pay attention to our kids and take it seriously and anything that they say, any problems that they have in their school, anytime they're acting a little different than what we're used to, we have to intervene. We have to pay attention. We have to be aware. We have to educate ourselves and we have to get our kids help. I saw that they charged the dad with murder because he bought the kid the gun. Sir, you're responsible you are 1000 percent responsible now i did see something where the mom or the aunt or something had called the school and was warning them that you know something was going to happen kudos to her for warning about something that was going to happen but did you know that he had the gun did you know that the daddy bought the son the gun because i don't know why you didn't warn the police or somebody when the daddy bought the boy the gun but because at that point weren't when you weren't to school it was too late so i'm sure there was plenty of times leading up to it where you could have said something where you could have done something where you could have intervened in some type of way in order to prevent your child from just making that extreme move and doing something like that because at 14 15 16 years old like young teenagers young adults a lot of the times they when they be going through this and be having these feelings they really be feeling like this is it like this is my life the world is about to end i'm just about to end it all i'm about to take whatever i can out with me not knowing that what they're going through is really just a small fraction of the rest of their lives it's literally like a millisecond of what the rest of their lives are going to be and they t it's like they're in a small space of just feeling like this is it i have nothing um i'm willing to risk it all and it's like just stick it out those couple of years just talk to somebody stick it out those couple of years and you graduate from high school or whatever you leave and you can completely reinvent yourself you can be whoever you want to be but i don't know that's just how i feel y'all that's just how I feel, and I see it every day, so. Mm. It's sad. It, it really is, like, really, really sad.